Welcome, welcome again. Thank you guys for tuning in to the Cloudy Days Calm Nights podcast. I'm your host, Lethal Coils, and today I'm joined, of course, by my two co-hosts, Matt Sinister and Chaos Pixie. How are you guys? Hello. Good. Good to it's, hear. Uh, 11.23 on the uh, West Coast. It's nice and sunny outside. Looks like it's going to be a warm day. It is 2.23 on the East Coast, and it went from snowing to rain and just looks like caca outside. Sure does. <laughs> Benefits of living in California. Yeah. Oh, it, it is wet, wet, wet outside uh, right now. I it's might pay more taxes, good. but I have nicer weather. <laughs> hey, you know, I'd love to be down south in wet, warmer weather. Um. Yeah, so we've got a great show tonight, guys, uh, planned out for you. Um, first off, we're going to do our buffets like we usually do. And today, obviously, like we usually do as well, um, we're going to cut that out right here. Okay, so we're going to start with our buffets. And uh, Matt Sinister, why don't you kick it off for us? Um, I got a... Just a simple little buffet going, not much. I've still, uh, I've been pretty lazy this week. Uh, stuff that I've needed to rewick or rebuild has just been kind of sitting on the sidelines. Um, did uh, a couple rewicks this morning. Um, starting it off with the uh, Turk V2 on top of the clutch. Some uh, Breeze Tones 26s on the inside. And I'm vaping that Hogwitz Yogurt's Basic Bitch. The uh, strawberries, or no, uh, um, spice cheesecake. Oh, yeah. I love basic bitch so much. Pumpkin, pumpkin spice cheesecake. Yes. Yes, it's very good. It's very um, good. Also, got the RDA for vapping. Um, also, Breestone 26 is on the inside. Side. I put it on top of the Vandy Vape Swell. The swell. The swell. And I'm Is looped. It swell? Uh, it's swell. <laughs> um, I don't know. I was like going through my cabinet looking for something I had put on, you know, a mod I hadn't used in a while. And that just kind of shined. Um, got some uh, Blue Raz sour gummies on the inside. Very nice. And then uh, rounding it off with uh, the subum tank. You know, I always have a subum tank going. Sometimes it's just because I'm lazy and I don't want to bother dripping. Or, uh, you know, when I go out, when I go somewhere, I take a sub home tank with me. And uh, this week I have the uh, Hell Beast on top of the V-Zone E-Mask with some strawberry watermelon bubblegum on the inside. I always like having a sub home tank handy. Like, even if I'm not actively using it, I like having one set up just for, like you said, the convenience factor. You know, just fill and go. Yep. Yeah, especially when you got to go out. You know, I mean, yeah, I could take an R RTA with me, but there's always the possibility of the RTA, you know, something happening. You're hitting a, a, a uh, check atomizer. Or, you know, there's something something's not hidden properly. It might not have been wicked properly in one spot. That spot's messing up the rest of it. Exactly. So, Dry hits burn through the cotton. Mm -hmm. it, it, it only takes one little thing and you've got to rebuild the whole thing. And when you're in the middle of errands that take you three or four hours, you're either A, stuck without a vape, or B, trying to sit there in the front seat of your car rebuilding something and cursing yourself over it. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Or like me, you rebuild before you leave the house. That way you don't have to, but all you got to worry about is dripping. Yeah, that works for you. Ah, but usually but what if you rebuild seat. and it's fine at first, but then you start hitting that check atomizer? Oh. Yeah, right? <laughs> Which does happen. Yep. That's it. <laughs> so that's what you got vaping today. That's what I got. That's what I got so far. Sick. A little bit, little bit later, I'm going to rebuild the TM24 with the Eclipse cap. Probably drip some Vule Bolo on it. And uh, I don't know, something else. Oh, yeah. I think I might build some... Uh... I might build some fused clappings for series later on as well. Um, Pixie, I, I know, I don't even have to ask you, what are you vaping <laughs> on tonight? I've got the Dreamer with the mini Asgard. That's 
And you guys have heard it on the podcast. This is pretty much all I've been vaping at home for an easy three weeks. Um, this week, or rather last week, uh, one of the pages I'm on had a support thing. And in support of some of the companies that sponsor them, I ordered some sale juice from the Captain's Quarter Facebook page. And I absolutely love it. I, I wasn't expecting a lot. Because generally when it's it's juice like this, I don't. Um, and I'm not sure how to actually say the name because it's a whole mouthful and a half. But... It's Pirate's Mutiny Poppets Brew Tropical Storm. So the company is Pirate's Mutiny. The, the version is Poppets Brew and the flavor is Tropical Storm. But it's a strawberry pina colada that I didn't have high hopes for when I took it out of the package and smelled it. It didn't have a heavy scent to it. When I knuckle tested it, it didn't really have a lot of flavor to it. So I wasn't looking forward to it. But I opened it yesterday, and I'm already like 15 to 20 mils into the bottle. Because it vapes deliciously. Hmm. All right. Oh. Well, I guess that leaves me uh, all by myself here. All by myself. I was uh, alone. <laughs> I was alone. All by myself. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yes, I was. <laughs> I was up in my room. I was all by myself. I was thinking um, of you. Yeah, I was thinking of you. Oh, yeah, did I mention? Uh, so, first up, what do I have vaping? We've got the blue Hexome with the blue Apocalypse Gen 2 sitting on top of that with some of my 26 gauge aliens in there uh, running at a point two right now. In that, I have the very last bit of Strawberry Toasty Jam by my boy Tom. Uh, some DIY stuff there. And uh, next up, what I've got is the Smoked Out Acrylic Saga. Limited edition there uh, from Vapor's Cloud. <coughs> and I've also got the Ardent RDA sitting on top of there. Inside that, I have some of my own DIY butterscotch uh, tobacco in there. Uh, not fantastic. Not an all-day vape for me. Uh, definitely something I put down quite often, but I do pick it up from time to time. Um, I have a, also, without uh, batteries in it, so I'm actually going to show that but or talk about it a little bit. I've got the H Cigar Wild Wolf 235, I do believe, is uh, the name of it. The Wild Wolf 235 uh, from H Cigar. And on top of that, I have the Asgard Mini RDA and uh, nice red and black matchy matchy. Yeah, and it looks good. Inside of that, I have some strawberry cheesecake mass hole style uh, sitting in there. Again, from my boy uh, Tom here in Massachusetts. Is they it love a custard? You, man. Thank you. Um, and of course, what else would I possibly have? on my buffet, except for the Beast from the East, the Laugh Now Cry Later box mod, uh, the DNA 250C4S LiPo, with the Steam Crave Aroma Miser Titan RDTA sitting on top there. And uh, inside of that, what I have is just a, a normal strawberry cheesecake uh, from my buddy Tom. And uh, we're running low. We're running low. We're gonna have to switch that up to the mass hole style soon. Yeah, but even that small amount will last you a few hours. You what? <laughs> in that tank, even that small amount will last you a few hours. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> uh, what is it? Like uh, fucking 30, 31 milliliters it holds? 28 milliliters. No, 30. <laughs> it's, oh, it, you got the, the 30. The glass is 28, but you got to remember that there's a well underneath. Okay, yeah. All right. So it, it actually holds like 30 or 31 mils. I can't remember. Um, but... The glass itself is 28 mill millimeters. Um, so yeah, that's going to wrap up our buffets. Let's do a weekly catch-up uh, like we do. Um, Pixie, I know you said you were doing some resin work over the past week. Uh, how's that been going? Have you been progressing? or? I've played around with it a bit, enough to get a handle on the new resin. Um, <clears throat> I'm debating putting up a 
sale to get some orders in. I'm still kind of juggling around figuring out how to market without shamelessly throwing myself on doorsteps. Like That's the same problem here. I have with my coils. <laughs> I make a bunch of shit. Would you like some of this shit? <laughs> you know, I don't uh, want to be I'll give you some person. of my shit. Welcome to Barter Town. Yeah. <laughs> right? Um, but things are going well. It's definitely the, the resin itself works a lot better than I thought it would. Um, it does have some limitations that the last one I was using doesn't. So I may end up going back to the old one when this is gone. But I'm sitting on two gallons of this, so unless people decide to order a whole bunch of trays... <laughs> this is going to last you a while. It's going to be a while. <laughs> yeah. I hear that. I hear that. How about you, Matt? I know you're still going through your training. You're doing. You're posting some videos now. You're posting some uh, updates. Yeah. yeah, on TikTok and uh, Instagram. Um, eventually, those videos will be combined. There's some other footage that, that uh, won't be shown until... until uh, uh, I get this whole thing put together and put it as a little documentary on YouTube. Um, but for now, I'm just trying to uh, uh, just kind of put a little bit out there. Uh, my uh, pri my pre-workout uh, vlogs, my uh, or really uh, video diaries, because they're not long enough really to call them a vlog. Um, you know, some uh, a few clips of me working out. Um, and believe me, those are some of the better... The, the better versions of uh, some of my training right. because there's literally days that I am just so exhausted and so beat up from in between doing this keto, uh, this keto program along with intermittent fasting um, between that. And then you get into the training and uh, after uh, you know, you, you seem to start fresh on Monday and then by thir th by Wednesday, you're starting to feel it Thursday. You're really tired. Friday, you know, it's sometimes hard to keep up. You're just, you're spent, you're exhausted, you need the weekend to recover. Yeah. And uh, that's what I'm doing this weekend is recovering because yeah, I am you still spent. Go. But you still go. You're making that effort, and I know it's uh, tough. Oh, well. I know it's tough, but you're pushing through it, and, dude, that's awesome. I don't, well, yeah, absolutely. And uh, I did uh, have a bit of progress. I've dropped 16 pounds and shed 7% body fat. That's awesome. Um, starting into the fourth week. Um, oh, shit. But again, it uh, it's very painful. Very, very painful. They're, they're literally like I have to like either do a full set or half a set and then rest yeah. for a minute or two, which is not has been my style of working out in the past. In the past, I would get, I would kind of do almost like a cardio style of uh, resistance or weight training, where I would not have rest periods. I would go, I would get my One three or four sets in between, between you know whatever machine or free weight I was using, depending on the amount of uh, what I was doing. You know, if it was four different styles of of training, mm -hmm. um, you know how many body parts I'm doing. Like yesterday, I I just did uh, my my back on on Friday. I just did up some, uh, but it was kind of a light back workout. But there's other days where you got like shoulders, triceps, and calves, or uh, you know a full leg day. So you're using about uh, you know six different pieces of equipment, mm -hmm. and with stretching in between. Uh, you know, and in, in the past, I would just boom, 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 get it done, get it done, get it done. Right. You know, really intense. And this time, not so, not so intense uh, of as far as the type of training, but it is intense as far as the effort that I'm putting into it. Mm. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> it's really difficult when you go when you're used to being able to beast mode something. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden you go back to it and you find out that y you just know it's, it's like not a thing for you anymore. <laughs> well, yeah. And then age is also a factor. Something I did in my twenties, I'm sure as hell not going to do anymore. Yeah. Right. Well, that happened when I had to stop barn work. Um, I mean, I had our daughter and spent some time at home before I found another job. And when I started working, 
I went through three different barns before I ended up back where I am now and have been for over six years now. And that's because all these others have been doing it for years and they stayed on. So they didn't lose that muscle. They didn't lose the muscle memory. And for me, the muscle memory was there, but the muscle was not. So I was lagging behind all these people. And it took it took a while for me to get that back up and, and be back to where I am today. But good lord, didn't I get mad at myself when I couldn't beast mode that stuff like I used to. I'm really looking forward to seeing more of your progress on TikTok and Instagram. I don't really use TikTok, but I do use Instagram, so I'll see him there. Um, maybe I'll get TikTok. I don't know. I used to have it, but... That's TikTok slippery would irritate slope, the brother. crap out of you. Yeah, TikTok would irritate the crap out of me. Um, you're right about that. I've, I've seen you use it, and I've seen Ari use it, and some of the stuff that comes up on TikTok is just the most ridiculous crap you have ever seen it is. in your entire life. Um, some of however, it I find amusing. Uh, some of it I just, you, I'm like, what is wrong with people? Oh. Like the, the heavy metal baby, though, that's like, that rocks. There's a, a dad who's an actual drummer, and he puts on masks, and he'll sit with his child in the high chair in front of him. He'll stand behind him, hold his arms with drumsticks in them. He'll play some metal song in the background, and as soon as the drums kick in, he starts fucking going to town with the baby's arms, and the fucking baby's just sitting there fucking drumming along. It's pretty actually, actually pretty funny if you saw it, um, but it is what it is. So yeah, I, I might get that. Um, some some of them are great. It's kind of like everything else. If you're searching for 4x4 four four trucks, then all the ads on your computer pop up as 4x4 four four trucks. So as long as you keep your searches mm. and like only the stuff that you want to see more content of, you're fine. But oh. the minute you hit one of the wrong videos, you hit one thirst trap, all of them pop up and it's game over. You have a oh. whole bunch of stuff that you're you're blocking and like, nope, I'm done. No, oh, no ma'am. Okay. <laughs> well, it, that's a deterrent, but uh, <laughs> uh, that would turn me off from TikTok. Um, so I guess, again, that, that leaves me uh, to go over my week, which has not been a great one. We're not going to spend a whole lot of time on me. Um, I am going to talk a little bit about my week here. Uh, what's made it so crappy? Well, as a lot of you guys know, we're still dealing with my um, elderly dog issues. Um, he's still with us at the moment, so that's a positive. Um, we're just unsure, unclear as to how long we're going to actually have left with him. Um, we're taking it day by day, and things don't seem to have been progressing in a negative manner all that much. So, um, I mean, things aren't like hopeful that he's going to be around forever, but, um, at least for now, he's not in any discomfort or anything like that. Um, That's good. Yeah, it is. It is, man. He's I hate seeing him hurt. I hate seeing him hurt and limp and fall on his butt. I hate seeing all of that. Um, so it, it, it's something we got to keep an eye on, but like I said, things haven't been progressing in a negative manner that much right now, so. That's good. Things have been maintaining very well at a level. Yeah, in a level field there. Uh, an even level. Um, what else has happened this week? Well, Wednesday morning. I'm just going to tell a quick story here. Wednesday morning, uh, I woke up and for some reason, I was thinking about my biological father's side of the family. And I started having questions that I never got to ask him that I wanted to ask him and get answers to. So I started searching him out, found my younger brother on Facebook, reached out to him, and found out that my biological father had passed away last October on the 17th of cardiac arrest. He'd suffered a heart attack. Um, and I also found out that day that my youngest sister of 32 years old had passed away on this past Monday of colon cancer, uh, which was a, a kind of a heavy blow. Um, again, I never met my sister ever, um, so I mean, it's not, I don't know, it's weird. Uh, I still feel like I have that connection with her because we've got a blood tie, but um, I never actually got the chance to know her, so I'm, I'm upset that I don't have that chance now. Um, yeah, that chance is gone, and yeah, that's why exactly. I've always told people, 
Exactly. No matter how angry you get at family. Mm -hmm. No matter well, what they do, and believe me, That's the thing. I know, I really know how much family can piss you off. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, you don't get to choose your family. No. And if uh, there, are, there are family members that are in your life or have never been in your life, and you've always wanted that opportunity, and you keep pushing it off, pushing it off, pushing it off, you may want to, or family members that you've had a falling out with, and you really need to fix that, even though it's really not going to do anything for your life, right. but it could provide you with a little peace, mm -hmm. a little peace of mind of knowing that, uh, you know, before they died, um, you were able to reach out and have some kind of connection. Right. And look, and it now, doesn't always go, doesn't always go good. No. You know, sometimes you, if you go into the lion's <laughs> den, you, uh, uh, may get attacked. You may get your head bitten off. Yeah. But uh, it's very possible the lions may be tame, or at least they may be tame for you, mm -hmm. and you can wind up becoming friends. Right. And uh, no, no uh, emotional blow is right. uh, too harsh to and, uh, uh, not risk trying. Yeah. And because once they're you... gone, they're gone, and you have no opportunity left. And that's it. You know, you you got to make use of the time that we have because it's not going to be there forever um you know like this for those of you guys out there listening uh that haven't heard this before um my father i never met him not once uh he was not around when i was born uh, i met him once when i was 29 years old actually um this was 10 years ago i met him for the first time and I was very nervous, like you said, Matt, you know, you're walking into the lion's den, you know, you don't know what's going to happen. Um, but fortunately enough, in this case, the lions were tame and I was welcomed and um, I got to at least see my father uh, one time. And that was my intent when I sought him out the first time was, you know what, I just want to meet him one time before I don't have that opportunity anymore. And I knew he was about 70 years old, and he was. He was 71. Um, and <clears throat> it went well. You know, we talked a little bit. But I was so nervous that I, I never asked him the questions that I really wanted to ask him. And then I thought about those questions this past Wednesday. That's what made him, me seek him out now. Well, then I, I found out from my youngest brother that he had passed away. And now I'm stuck with all these questions that I'll, I'll never have answers to. And I... I won't have any closure um, with my father on that level. Uh, but with your uh, with your brother, you may get some form of closure because maybe exactly. he has some of the answers that you might be looking for. Yes, and I was going to get to that too. That there is a si silver lining to all of this, and that's that I've connected uh, with my youngest brother now. Who, um, again, I've only met him one time, and that was it, um, ten years ago. So we've never had a connection. We are perfect strangers to each other right now, but we both are on the same wavelength where we want to get to know each other. Um, we want to become friends and act as brothers do. Um, yeah. You know, and so the fact that he wants to do that as well makes me super excited. Um, he is 30, uh, which doesn't really make a difference but he's 30 years old and what does make a little bit of a difference to me is that he's autistic and the only reason that makes a difference to me is n there's nothing wrong with autistic people what is going to be difficult for me is learning learning autism and learning his triggers and learning exactly how to talk with him and how to act with him um and so that's the challenge that I'm going to be faced with. But I'm really excited about being given this opportunity to be in his life, for him to be in my life, and for, you know, just that learning experience of someone with autism. I've never, I don't have that experience. I've never had to surround myself with anybody with uh, with autism. Uh, not that I've had to, but I, I just never have. Um, 
I don't have any experience interacting with, with people with autism. So I've been really reaching out to a lot of people that I know that do uh, have a, a lot of experience there. Um, and they've been helping me out greatly. It's been a, a blessing to have these people in my corner and willing to uh, kind of sit down with me and explain, you know, don't, don't do this, don't do this, uh-huh. this is okay, and this is awesome. Uh, it helps having somebody that knows all of these things that can give you advice like that. Uh, and again, it's even though the advice is there, you still have to take it on an individual basis because every case of autism is different for each individual. Uh, it manifests yeah. in different ways. So, you know, the way that my friend's daughter is uh, is not going to be the same way that my brother is. You know, so... I no. have to learn his individual quirks and what makes him tick, um, you know, in addition to using that advice as well. But I am, I'm really and, excited for it. Uh, you know, it has been a crap week. That is one good thing that's come out of it. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention about my week is that we started, we, I say we, Lethal Coils Incorporated. Uh, no. Uh, I have started a sale uh, starting yesterday. And it's going to go for a week until March 4th. The, uh, Mar- May the 4th. No, that's April, May. Oh, March 4th, not May 4th. Damn. No, I was hoping May it was Star Wars Day, but no. it's not. Um, but yeah, we started a sale on coils yesterday going until the 4th of March, uh, which is just one week long. So, uh, guys, if you're interested in coils, hit me up on Instagram or Facebook, guys. Uh, I'd greatly appreciate that. Um, but the coils are discounted price for the next week. So, And because Lethal won't tag it, and he won't push himself any further than that, the sale going on is Aliens at $10 a pair, Fused Clapton's at $5 a pair, and Clapton's at $4 a pair. So definitely a way to get a whole bunch of really good hand-built coils for a very affordable price delivered right to your door from ours. Point of note, Price of coils does not reflect price of shipping. <laughs> so yeah, I think people need to. Uh, there's more people need to be aware of that when something says it's, uh, you know, nine ninety nine for example. Um, you think that's the total? You think that's the total? No, there's taxes. There's, in yep. some cases, service fees, which kind of sucks. Well, in my case, and, there's no uh, service fees, no taxes, just shipping costs. And then there's of course shipping costs and. Uh, that's one of the things that's so mind-boggling about the uh, upcoming vape mail ban is that uh, it's going to be costing the uh, the U.S. Postal Service quite a lot of money. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep, absolutely. Uh, more money than, than they have, I think. Um, to do what they want to do, it, it would take a lot of money and manpower. Um, and I don't believe they have enough of either to, to facilitate <laughs> what they want to do to scale to screen packages and, you know, maintain this, this vape mail ban. Um, and I think as long as you put something different on the package, yeah, you pro- you know, you're it, probably not going to, you know, like I was having this talk I mean, yesterday with a couple of people. What about Dynavac? Cause it's a vaporizer, you know, I mean, they started out for tobacco, not for marijuana, but they started uh-huh. out with, um, the Dynavac was designed to be used with tobacco, loose leaf, loose leaf tobacco. And um, then people started using it for, for THC. So I was like, you know, what about what about the Dynavap? Is that going to be a thing that's on the, you know, do not ship list? And then I, we thought about it. I'm like, you know what? Just label it as machine parts. What else is it other than a metal tube? Yeah. You know, it's. Yeah, I've heard some DIYers uh, that uh, sell their uh, sell their e-liquid saying, hey, look, I sell beard oil. Oh. Beard oil, uh, I've had a shipment come in from the UK that was labeled adult lubricant. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was pretty funny. That's one way around it. And I actually encourage that because that'll 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 uh, make them cringe yeah, even more on the thought of trying one. to inspect your package. Well, that'll, and I do that when I ship out stuff for lethal, like when he's got stuff and he's busy doing something. When I run to the post office, especially when I have to send stuff overseas, I usually just put wire jewelry because it's wire in shapes 
which on the most rudimentary level is usually could jewelry. be wire jewelry. Yep. <laughs> yep. I agree. I think it's think it's important that uh, you know, as far as a return address goes from from anyone who's still willing to uh, ship. Yep. That uh, um, put anything other than something that says vapor. Yeah. Or vaping. With my coils, I'll put something like um, metal heating elements. Yeah. You know? Um, it's just a little trickery with the words. Yeah, that's all. That's and gotta be that'll slick easily with get it. you, you know, unless you got a, a postmaster that's got a real bug up his ass. Absolutely. Um, it, that should get you by just fine. Because at the end of the day, you got to remember who are people? Yep. Uh, people are no different than. Uh, you know, politicians, um, religious uh, 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 preachers, for lack of a de- better term. Yep. Um, a uh, you know, a couple varieties of people to kind of just stay within their own zone of of uh, friends and coworkers. <coughs> right. Absolutely. Um... And I, I was just thinking about this, and maybe I'm a little slow to the party, but uh, I just thought about this and had a startling realization about this USPS uh, mail ban. Um, if they haven't already been, every mom and pop shop in Massachusetts is going to have to shut down. They're going to have to shut down. Yeah. We can't get flavors here in Massachusetts. What is like ninety percent of a vape shop's revenue come from? Comes from juice. From liquid, yeah. We no no. We can't get flavors here in Massachusetts anyways. And if they start this vape mail ban, we're all screwed. Come most of it comes from juice pods and, and coils. Mm-hmm. Because you only buy a device once and if that device lasts you a year. Every other purchase you make for that device would be either replacement batteries, juice, or coils. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, well, I don't think we have to worry about batteries because batteries can be used in other things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, but liquid, devices, pods. Yeah. You know, all yeah, that stuff is, uh, you know, spare parts. Yep. You got to label it differently. You just well, got to like label Grimm it differently. Said, yeah, it's like Grim said in the vlog, though. Uh, he had a, a big segment about it, but... The black market is here, you know. Mm-hmm. It's this is the way it's gonna go now. They have forced our hand. Um, this is the way. This is the way, and they don't. <laughs> they did this. They they did this with all of their regulation and their misinformation, and they're trying to bury the truth and not pay attention to facts. They they did this. They created this black market, um, but it is officially here. And uh, yes, it is. You know, it, it's a sad day, but it, a lot of people don't realize it was here before. Well, and then it turned into a valid market, and they expect it to go away. No, it's just going to revert to what it originally yes, was. Yes, it's going to revert to what we were doing, you before. know, yeah. and like from 09 to 14. You know, yep. I, yep. You know, Absolutely. we're just going to have to, uh, you know, one thing that we're fortunate about is that we're part of a very close tight community of vapors yeah and uh so you know there's always you know we got the diyers we got some people who own shops that are uh willing to uh you know special order juices that you can't necessarily get uh at your corner uh uh smoke shop right you know or vape shop whatever so uh that is uh you know Always a you know a big sign of relief for me, but I'm going. You know what? I I don't have to go without this for too long. Um, I know I know the people that know the people, or I know the people that do. You know, it's gonna uh, vaping's not going anywhere. No, and I, I, like I'm not so much concerned for myself as I am for others. Um, yeah, like I have made a lot of connections, so. I can, you know, I'll, I'll be fine. Like, I'll survive through vaping. But mm-hmm. there's so many people out there, so many vapors that are going to get screwed by this. All the smokers that would have transitioned to vaping from smoking 
they're going to be affected by this. And, you know, smokers in general are going to be affected by this. Like a hobbyist vapor. Yeah, that's, aren't that's the big issue. unfortunate part. The problem with vaping isn't going to be for the hobbyist because, like you said, most of us have connections. Even if I can't build aliens, I at least have the stuff to wrap round wire builds. And if I have to go back to round wire, then I would. You can buy the flavorings. It might be difficult to buy the nicotine, but vapors found a way before and they'll find a way again. What worries me is I'm worried for the people that have systems that run their smock tanks all the time, not being able to get the coils and juice that they need to keep up because the hobbyist vapors mm -hmm. will keep this alive in the black market with absolutely no issues. No. It's the people in the middle and the people who only use pod systems and the people who only use stuff like that that I really worry for because they either have to stop vaping or they go back to smoking. Mm -hmm. And I'm not so concerned about the vape mail ban affecting the liquid nicotine for DIYers. What I am concerned about affecting the liquid nicotine shipments for DIYers is that I heard this uh, about a year ago. And I don't know where they, what kind of progress they've pushed on this, but they wanted to take nicotine and restrict the sale from companies. Each company had to register that sold liquid nicotine, and they were going to make it so uh, consumers such as myself or you, Matt, or Roxanne, uh, mm -hmm. Chaos Pixie, uh, consumers would not be able to purchase these and have them shipped. In order to buy nicotine, you would have to be a licensed tobacconist. Uh, and I don't know what kind of progress they've made on that, but that would screw us too. Yeah, but at the same time, uh, yeah, no question. And it's not right that being done. But, you know, if we know, uh, if you have your connections, if you if you really get immerse yourself in this community, um, you'll, you'll find uh, shop owners that are going to, Say, you know what, what do you need? I'll order it. And then, you know, you can, we'll, we'll work out how we uh, make the exchange later. Mm. Um, it's just, it's a, a lot of variables, a right. lot of variables. Absolutely. But I think, uh, you know, from as far as uh, you and I and uh, everyone in the vape, in, in, you know, at least within our vape community, there are several vape communities. Yep. But what's interesting is when, you know, two different communities of vapors uh, get together, it's just like, you know, any other locker room, right? You know, to give you a wrestling term, uh, the boys are the boys. Mm. Meaning, uh, you can mix all these different locker rooms up together, and everyone's pretty much going to act like how how wrestlers do in a locker room. Right, right. Boys will be boys. Snapping mm -hmm. towels. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't do that. But uh, especially nowadays, because now there's uh, you know, it's not just uh, the boys, it's the boys and the girls. Oh, you don't want to rat tail a chick, no. 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 I've tried oh. that. I got hit really hard. I, <laughs> I have been privy to what goes on in guys' locker rooms, and I have been privy to what goes on in women's locker rooms, and I absolutely Did would have... much prefer to hang out with the guys. Of because, course you would. No, <laughs> girls are fucking brutal. <laughs> They are brutal. Like, you guys think, like, towel snapping is bad? Girls can get freaking nasty. Yeah, I don't don't doubt that. Um, <laughs> I've seen more temper come out of a woman than I've got. So, um, yeah, I can It depends see that. which personality you're dealing with that day. <laughs> yeah, right? Which which person are we going to be today? That's uh, the big question every every morning. What kind of, uh, what kind of person am I going to be today? Um, so yeah, vape mail ban, we talked a little bit about that, uh, talked a little bit about the black market being in existence. Um, so we have a couple of topics that we wanted to talk about today, and we're going to start with the, the first one that we thought of first. There we go. That's what I wanted to say. <laughs> first uh, one that we thought of first. Yeah, too many firsts. So let's do that first. Let's do it first. Um, yeah, food. Food. <laughs> I like this topic. <laughs> yeah. I, th I think everybody likes this topic because, I mean, it's a necessity for life. 
and it sometimes, sometimes tastes very, very good and is very pleasing. Other mm -hmm. times, not so much. Uh, but what kind of which food... I can attest to being on this uh, keto program. <laughs> so, what kind of food stuff are we talking today? We are talking about toppings. What kind of toppings we like on what different kinds of foods such as and not just toppings i don't think toppings is the only uh there's also side dishes side dishes because yep. there's going to be some food that doesn't necessarily have a topping yeah but it, it's going to have some stuff on the side there that makes it a complete meal absolutely okay we'll go with that um so i guess we'll kick it off we're not it's been done so many times before guys we're not going to do it we're not doing pizza that has been done a million times. Um, although I will say with pizza, french fries would make it a whole meal. Pizza is a whole french meal. French fries on itself. top of the pizza? No, on the side. <laughs> <laughs> no, pizza is a meal in itself because you have grain, you have dairy, you have veggies, and then your toppings, you can add extra veggies. So, Or that is a you meal could add pineapple. Fruit. Exactly. And then I can power bomb you. <laughs> <laughs> you and your pizza. That's okay. I will die happy with Hawaiian pizza in my belly. <laughs> I can see him. I can see him power bomb my pizza. Yeah, brother. No, then I power bomb. I, once I power bomb you, it comes out. <laughs> <laughs> you void your bowels and you die. <laughs> Better out than in. I always say. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> uh, unless you're wearing pants. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that might be a little messy. That might be. Let's kick it off. What did we have for dinner last night? We had hamburgers. Let's let's kick it off with hamburgers. Um, Matt, do you eat hamburgers, cheeseburgers, and what do you I have? have I'm them? not eating them currently, as far as at least not with uh, the traditional with a, with bread. Bread okay. is clearly not part of the keto diet, <laughs> um, but I do uh, like uh, uh Last week, I was hanging out with a buddy of mine, and uh, we went to we went to Carl's Jr. and I ordered a famous star, and just ate the meat and the cheese. Mm. Okay. Completely bypassed the bun. When it always came to burgers for me, I always prefer plain with cheese. Sometimes a little mayo, but you know, plain with cheese. If if uh, you can add bacon to it, always makes it better. See, I'm kind but, of in the uh, same boat. I I'm don't like too many toppings on my, you know, I don't like the lettuce, the tomato, the onions, you know, the sauces, because I want to taste the meat. I want to know that, you know, if you're putting all that on top of a burger, maybe the meat's not so good. You know, I like to taste the cheese, right. I like to taste the meat. I get that. Um, and it's, uh, you know, it's a mixed bag as far as I've talked to some people that, uh, that prefer it that way, and then I, other people that think that that's not you're not getting the whole burger if you're not adding all those uh, I, additional flavors. Yeah, and I'm kind of on that line. Uh, I'm kind of on in that position where I'm like, it's not a full burger unless you've got all these mix-ins. So for me, well, first of all, my favorite type of burger is a bacon mushroom cheeseburger. Um, those are my favorites. As far as toppings, what I like to put on them, definitely lettuce, tomato, pickles, onions, um, preferably red onions, not the white ones. Um, but I will always have ketchup and mustard on my burgers. And uh, that's that's about it. So bacons, bacons, bacon, mushrooms, cheese, onions, lettuce, tomato, pickles, uh, ketchup and mustard is how I do my, my burgers. Sounds like the old McDonald's song. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> right? See, I've always On been told... On top of a sesame seed bun. <laughs> I've always been told, particularly like by lethal, that burger itself is not a meal. Because I am the type of person where I will take a pound of burger, I will cook that up, I will put it in a bowl, and I will eat it straight to my face. I'm happy with that. I leave, leave the carbs, I get the yummy goodness. You know, sometimes I'll mix in some shredded cheese drizzle a little ketchup or barbecue sauce on it, and I'm good to go. To me, personally, my inner and outer fat kid both say that that is absolutely an acceptable meal. If I'm out and about, I tend to like to expand my palate a little bit depending on where I'm at. So, like, we went to Five Guys last night. 
I don't. I I love the rodeo cheeseburgers from Burger King. So I decided to try the Five Guys version by adding the grilled onions and barbecue sauce. Not great, huh? The burger, the onions and stuff was fine, but it was so greasy. Oh, yeah. Like, it was, there's an acceptable level of greasiness to a burger. And then there's, I'm going to saturate the entire inside of this package that I came in before you even pick me up. Yeah. And it, it was just, it was messy. It with was five sloppy. guys? Yeah, I imagine. It, it's kind of uh, like. Matthew. <laughs> oh. God damn it. <laughs> did you did you have mayonnaise from Five Guys? Christopher. <laughs> I don't know why I keep coming back to do this show with you guys. <laughs> I'm sorry I had to. Ooh. But no, you're right. The burgers were super greasy. Uh, it, in fact, I can kind of compare them to the Wendy's. Uh, it was the triple baconator. Oh my God! I nicknamed it the Heart Stopper. It was so greasy, it was insane. It's like you, you pick up the burger and you get fingerprinted from the from the bun. <laughs> exactly. You pick it up and it just starts dripping, and I'm like, "Ooh, that's a lot of grease." <laughs> yeah. But like it, it a burger and the toppings that go on it. Like, I don't know if your only job is to sit there and put the burger on the bun and put stuff on it, you would think that centering it would be part of your training. <laughs> like, nothing pisses me off more than getting a burger from somewhere, opening the wrapper, and, like, a third of the burger is all on stage right, and the cheese and shit is all centered. So it's like, what, now I have to put it together myself? I would have rather just, yes. like, made this at home. Yep. But I have learned one thing about Five Guys last night. <clears throat> <time. laughs> when we ordered our food... And we got it. I brought my... Because I ordered a bacon cheeseburger, a bacon mushroom cheeseburger, and I ordered it what they call all the way, which is <laughs> lettuce, tomatoes, pickles, grilled mushrooms, and grilled onions, uh, as well, well as ketchup and mustard. All the way with mustard. five guys. <laughs> you know, all made by five guys. That's it. Uh, but I, that's what I ordered. And then yeah, when the I... Yeah, the puns are kind of endless. <laughs> Uh, and they're, they're not so big either. Um, but uh, when I got the burger that they made me the first time, I opened it, and all that was on it were two patties, some cheese, and a little bit of ketchup. And I was like, the hell is this? <laughs> this is not what I ordered. You did so, not just pay $10 for no, two patties and some ketchup. No. So I brought it back up there. I was like, uh, this was supposed to be made this way. I'll tell you what, you ever... Go there, and they make your burger. I swear to God, the first one that you open is going to look like a 3 or a $4 burger, even though they charge you 8 or 9 Uh, Okay? You complain one time, and they have to remake your burger. It comes out looking like a $10 burger. I'll tell you that much right now. So, if you ever go to Five Guys, order, complain, and look what you get. Just watch. <laughs> mm-hmm. That that's what I learned last night. If you ever want a ten dollar burger from Five Guys, you got to bitch about it first. <laughs> yeah. But um, so yeah, that's what I like on my burgers. Um, Pixie, what do you have for another food that we can uh, throw out there oh. with uh, toppings and si well, actually, what do we like for side dishes with our burgers? Obviously, French fries. I mean, that's French a fries, mac yeah. and cheese, mm -hmm. chips, chips. Yeah, yep. potato chips. Pretty standard things. Yeah. Like burgers. Yeah. Burgers for me are usually a barbecue food. True. Like it's not something I make often in the winter for dinner, but like as soon as spring comes, we are out there on that grill. We have burgers at least once a week. And it's, we do corn on the cob or french fries or chips Yo, and potato go, salad. We go through so much propane in this course of <clears throat> the spring, summer, and fall months. It's ridiculous. I am out there grilling any chance I can get. Uh, so we usually eat really, really well during the spring, summer, and fall. Well, and it's it's cheaper when you can grill it because I, I can buy, you know, a five-pound pack of chicken 
for 10 bucks, and I can split that chicken into three meals. Right. And it can be grilled. It can go in a casserole. It can, you know, there's a lot more options when you've got inside and outside. You know, I'm not super creative when it when it's kitchen food. But grilling, grilling is a whole different, you know, I can hand him chicken and a sauce that I made. And here you go, try this. Okay. Psh, flip, flip, flip. Done. Hey, that tastes pretty damn good. You know, it's uh, it's one of those things. What we about do trial and error what stuff. about omelets? What do you like to put in your omelet? Meat and cheese. I do <laughs> not. <laughs> I do not do a lot of veggies in my omelets. I like like ham and cheese, sausage and cheese. That's what she like, said. I'm very. <laughs> and I'm I'm on the same page. You know, like this morning I this morning I had a uh, a uh, I took four eggs and uh, whisked them up and uh, made a uh, bacon cheese omelet. Yeah, I Very just nice. I feel like if you're going with that much protein from the eggs, you may as well just keep it going. See, when I have omelets, I don't usually do omelets. When I make eggs, I usually do like scrambled, but I I do uh-huh. like. A, a big scramble bowl and what I'll typically do is I'll fry up some corned beef hash I'll fry up some bacon I'll take the bacon and I'll crumble it and I'll take the corned beef hash and I'll mix it into a big bowl with the scrambled eggs and uh, I we eat it like that often but when it comes to omelets I like a little bit more variety inside of my omelets so I like green peppers onions uh, sometimes mushrooms. I do like my mushrooms. Um, you know, ham is all right in an om- omelet. I prefer steak, like some shaved steak yeah. or something. So do uh, I. You know, um, but that, and I, yeah, I know it might sound a little gross, but I eat it with ketchup. You know, it's something I do. But yeah, that's what I like in my omelets. The only time I do variety in my omelets is I make these little individual, like, quiche omelets. I use a muffin tray, and you grease it. And I'll do kind of like omelets for everybody. Like, he likes spinach and feta. Yep. So I'll do a row of spinach and feta. Ari likes bacon and mushroom. I'll do a row of bacon and mushroom. And then, you know, for the next two or three days, you can just grab one out of the container put it in the microwave for 30 seconds, and now you have an omelet before you run out the door for whatever you're doing. Right. You know, I do more omelets that way than I do, like, for myself for actual breakfast. Yeah, we're kind of like backwoods chefs, almost. (laughs) Like, (laughs) yeah, pretty much. Uh, Like, we do things on a budget. We make meals on a budget, and we make weird food sometimes, but, like, easy... Uh, fast and like for example we make like uh, tortilla pizzas in the oven Um, we'll make um, all sorts of different stuff like I grew up poor I grew up like two nights a week or pasta nights yeah kind of poor so a lot of the food that I do isn't like people are like, oh, you got to try this roast garlic and tomato basil sauce. And I'm like, eh. We were ramen three nights a week. <laughs> Can I get like. Yeah, I was shake and bake three nights a week. <laughs> yep. Yep. Shake and bake was a big one. Um, breakfast for dinner was a big one because my mom could get like the 18 pack of eggs for $2. And that took care of breakfast mm. and it took care of. And it all it was shake and bake was always drumsticks because it was always the cheapest chicken that they sold. Yep, sixty Mm -hmm. cents a pound on sale. My mother would get like six packages and keep them in the freezer. Yep, yep. So I I remember that. Yeah, definitely shake and bake. Um, So like budget cooking is a whole lot different. Like going to other people's houses growing up. Like see it. Budget cooking for me is super hard because when I cook, when I actually cook. I love using fresh ingredients. I love using fresh vegetables, um, you know, fresh milk, stuff like that, and making it from scratch. I don't really like using all these canned veggies or frozen mm-hmm. veggies or, um, you know, anything that's not like fresh grown 
produce. Uh, I love using fresh stuff. So when you're on a budget, that can get kind of expensive. Uh, oh, yeah. So it, it's it's one of those things that I don't do all the time, but I like to indulge sometimes, you know. And Well, it works out because when I do the shopping, I can pick up, you know, what do you want to make this week? Oh, I want to do steaks, and peppers, and onions. All right. Grab a couple onions. Grab a couple peppers. Grab yep. the steaks. And then I can pick up a five-pound bag of potatoes, use a pound of burger. I make a shepherd's pie that lasts us two nights. Right. And then you can have your fresh stuff to do Ow. Wednesday night. It, right. It's a delicate balance, and it works out well because I don't do a lot of that kind of cooking. I am very much a crock pot cooker. I'm an oven cooker. I'm an I'll make three casseroles on a Sunday and freeze them kind of cooker. <laughs> and he is the fresh person. So it's a nice balance through the week. I am, when it comes to cooking, I am a cast iron and a grill guy. That is it. I love cooking on cast iron and grills. That's me. Well, uh, I don't have a grill. I uh, just kind of cook in the kitchen mm -hmm. and uh, try to keep it as simple as possible. Yeah. I like otherwise. Some... Otherwise, it's just going to be a mess. Yeah, I always make a mess when I cook, but that's because I do like the more complex recipes that take mm -hmm. a little bit of work and preparation before uh, you actually get to the, the cooking part of it. Um, but that's me, you know, like I, I, I enjoy getting involved with cooking. Um, my dad was also a chef for many years, so he taught me quite a bit um, of what I know to how to cook. Um, and if I ever have any questions about what I'm doing, I can always reach out to him, and he's more than happy to help me out. So, um, Are the ice cubes supposed to freeze this way? <laughs> yeah, right? No. <laughs> well, no, like, I asked him about, you know, last, not last year, but the year before, um, for Thanksgiving, I was doing everything from scratch, and, you know, how do I do my turkey? Is this the right way that I'm doing it right now? And um, what about my pumpkin pie? You know, stuff like that, and... Um, he's always been more than willing to help me out. So I appreciate having that, that outlet, that resource available. Um, but how about on a different type of food? How about pancakes? What do you like in your pancakes and what do you like to put on your pancakes? Well, I like, you know, just old fashioned, uh, buttermilk pancakes i've never been to blueberry or any of the fruit style pancakes okay not going to say no to a chocolate chip peanut butter pancake but uh <laughs> um of course uh, all these foods we have discussed um i'm not currently eating any of them no so. <laughs> no nor will i be in the in the foreseeable future <laughs> oh i don't but, like uh, anything in my pancakes i don't mind things on them like if you want to crush up some strawberries and put them on top of my pancakes that's awesome. Okay. But not in them. I don't like hot blueberries or strawberries. Oh, I love that. I want that contrast of hot pancake and cold fruit. I do. I, I like the warm blueberry taste of it. It, it just <clears throat> it makes me happy for some reason, and I don't know why. Um, pancakes are weird for me because, again, I don't do things simple and easy. So buttermilk pancakes... Yes, they're great. They're good. They're traditional and a classic staple for pancakes. However, that's not good enough for me. So one thing that I, I discovered, and I never looked up a recipe for this. I don't know if this is even a recipe out there that people have done. Um, I know that I tried this just because I, I thought about it on a whim. But what I did was I mixed up the batter and I fried up some bacon. And again, I crumbled it up and I took some maple syrup. And I poured some maple syrup into the batter and I put the chunks of bacon in there and I made maple bacon pancakes and they were some of the most delicious pancakes I have ever had. Uh, I was super impressed with it and I've been making them since then. I absolutely <laughs> love it. Um, as far as toppings on my pancakes, no blueberries on top, but strawberries I will do with whipped cream. Um, if I don't have fruit and cream on top of my pancakes, I am definitely using maple syrup. That's that's a given. 
Well, yeah, that's the other thing, too, is I just prefer straight, old-fashioned maple syrup. Yeah. I don't want strawberry syrup or blueberry syrup or right, chocolate right. mousse syrup or whatever the hell. <laughs> um, yeah, no, just give me a normal stack of plain old buttermilk pancakes, and you're going to try to spread the butter evenly <clears throat> as you're uh, spreading it. Uh, so you got four pancakes. I want the same amount of butter on the top one as I do on the bottom one. Yep. Yep. I am the and same what I, way. <laughs> what I, yeah. What I generally do too is I'll like, I'll poke, you know, with the knife as I'm spreading the, the butter is I'll kind of carve out a little tiny uh, part in the center. Mm. So when you pour the syrup, it goes all the way down into that. Oh, that's cool. You know, and kind of saturates it. That's cool. Uh, now, what was I going to ask? See, I, I had a question that I just thought about, but I forgot I do it similar, but instead of a hole in the center when I do my pancakes, before I pour the syrup, I'll cut like five lines into it. So when I pour mm-hmm. the syrup, it drips in between each strip, and I can cut pieces off of each strip as I go. Hmm. All right. So what about keto foods that you can eat? Matt's turn to pick one. Hold on. Pause. I gotta piss. <laughs> okay, so what are you what are you able to eat on your keto diet, Matt? Like what what kind of stuff can you put toppings on or use as a side that might be a meal or meal that might be a side? Um, well, I really try to keep it simple. Um, it's it can get it can get complicated if I'm trying to uh, make some kind of like uh what am i what am i looking for fancy dish so to speak um you know i start my day off uh usually with a uh a smoothie you know a protein shake you know that's got uh uh you know uh almond milk unsweetened almond milk um you know uh protein powder you know protein powder a uh, chia seeds coconut oil um I also put like some uh, supplements of uh, this is kind of called vitamin or green. That's like uh, all your all your greens in a powdered form. Okay. You know, a variety of different greens. You know, from all over the world. Okay. Um, put into this powder into this powder, um, and then from there, I kind of uh, what I like to do sometimes is I'll cook a pound of meat. Whether it's bison, whether it's ground beef, whether it's ground chicken, um, and then I'll uh, I'll put things in like bacon and cheese, mushrooms, garlic, uh, bell peppers. I'll put uh, and I'll kind of just make this like uh, this dish, and I'll uh, put in uh, bone broth sometimes, and I'll make like a stew. Okay. Um, or I'll just uh, eat it like that, you know. Right. Yeah, and with keto, there's no bread, there's no potato, there's no rice, oh, wow. there's none of the filler things that you no n- that you would normally. All. Yeah, no grains at all. Um, you know, my my uh, uh, when you, you uh, measure out the macros, um, which is seventy uh, percent of that is fats on the keto program. Mm-hmm. Uh, 25% is protein, 5% is carbohydrates, which is generally under 50 grams of, car- of total carbohydrates. Oh, wow. So okay. it can get it can get tough. It can get tough. So uh, that's why I try to keep it simple. Just have a kind of a meat dish, you know, bacon, cheese, you know, maybe a few veggies. Mm-hmm. And then I stick with, uh, with like, uh, you know, protein, different types of protein smoothies. And you could throw all kinds of things in there, you know. Right. Like, I would definitely be, I don't know. I'm one of those guys that can eat, like, meat and (coughs) veggies all the time. Um, I don't really need to to have my bread or my grains. I know that it's a part of, like, a good diet, but I don't Mm -hmm. really have a good diet. So, um, I'd be down 
draft or something like that, I think. Yeah, well, you're a skinny bastard, too. Know. So, you know, uh, I'm a I, you know you're not dealing with, the, dealing with some of the shit that I deal with. Yeah. Where, you know, you look at a pizza and you gain weight. Oh. Mm. Well, that's I tried the keto thing. <clears throat> and granted, I only put like 50% effort in. But it got to be... I mean, I, I'm not going to force the two of them to follow the same diet that I do. Neither of them need it. Who? You and Ari. Oh, yeah. No. I mean, our daughter's 5'1", maybe 110 pounds soaking wet with change in her pockets. <laughs> yeah. Neither of them need a diet. No, really don't. I'm and, like close to six foot and <clears throat> I weigh like 162. I mean, and that's with all my clothes on and my shoes. So like, I tried, but it got expensive because I was having, it does. In, instead of, you know, a single serving of chicken, I was having him cook two chicken breasts because one I could eat with dinner. The next one I could shred up and put on a salad the next day. But finding, finding that balance and avoiding carbs when all they munch on are chips and cereal and mm-hmm. yeah. It's really hard when there's that much temptation right there, and it's like, well, I could just grab a handful of those chips, or I could make myself a chicken and veggie scramble. Hmm, that's true. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. Sometimes it's about convenience. One thing that I do for a little snack that I snack on throughout the day is I'll get uh, a little pepperoni, uh, some pepperoni, and wrap it, and uh, it's kind of like a. Uh, and wrap it in a blo- a cheese, uh, some cheese. Yep. And it's kind of like a, uh, a Lunchable without the crackers. Yeah. Mm. Now, you can't have grains. Like, so the shell would be out of the question, but would you do, like, you can't have tacos because of the shell. Mm-hmm. So would you do something like make the, the taco-flavored beef with lettuce and tomatoes and cheese? Would you do? Is that something um, that you would do? No, I mean I've seasoned up uh, ground beef with you know taco style, you know seasoning in ground beef, especially I want to give it a spice. Yeah. Um, and believe me, seasoning is everything in keto. Yeah. To make sure you're satisfied. If you're not satisfied, you're gonna you know you're gonna look for those cravings of uh, of different of different types of flavors. You know. Um, but I got that, I got two things for me. One, as I season all my, my meat and foods, That's you know, what she said. um, but I also have vaping. So if I'm, if I want a flavor and yeah. you know, if I want some cheesecake, I got some of Mitch's, uh, Hogwarts yogurt yeah, right here, buddy. some, uh, That's right. pumpkin spice cheesecake. It, that's um, your cheat food is the pumpkin spice cheesecake. Yeah. That's my cheat food is my vape. Think about a keto diet is uh, you can't uh, you can't cheat if you're going to have a cheat day it has to be a keto style cheat day. Oh, geez. you know. So I've really found that that's kind of you know, and that really just goes with uh, certain things that are going to be, you know, maybe your carb intake is going to be maybe six or seven percent that day as opposed to five. Right. Like uh, one of the little things that I have to snack on are these things called uh, fat bombs. And uh, basically what it is, it's a peanut butter cup with no sugar in it. None. Interesting. <clears throat> Interesting. So uh, uh, it, it, uh, it has, uh, you know, this, this little, one of those little cups, um, which is the same size, which may be a little smaller, but basically the same size as a Reese's peanut butter cup, has uh, two net carbs in it. Holy shit. Yeah. Which means you have to subtract the fiber and the uh, the any sugar alcohol that's in there, you know? okay? Because um, your body will digest that, um, and then the rest is just going to be uh, uh, left over that your body will either store or are more than likely will store because it's a sugar. Um, See, it drives and the whole point of crazy, ke- whole point of keto is to get your body to use fats as a fuel source. Okay. And if you're completely depleting your body of carbohydrates, um, that's what it's going to use. Because protein can't be used as a fuel source for okay. your body. It can only be used to, uh, you know, uh, help your with your uh, the growth and healing of your muscles. See, it drives lethal crazy because when I was looking into keto and I was trying it, 
a friend of mine gave me one of those little veggie noodle makers. So if I get zucchini, I pick up like two or three pounds of zucchini when it's on sale for like 98 cents. I noodle that shit up. I put it in bags and I keep it in the freezer. So when they have pasta, if I don't feel like having pasta or I feel heavy or I feel bloated, I just do some of my zucchini noodles and put my sauce and my meatballs on top of that versus the actual pasta. Um, you got to be careful with sauces too because sauces, yeah. a lot of sauces have sugar. Yep, that's true. Because I use, I use uh, brown sugar or syrup uh, to kind of, when I'm, like I said, when I cook, I like to use fresh veggies. And that includes my tomato sauces, my pasta sauces. I like to make those from scratch. Um, so I'll, a lot of the time, if you n know anything about making your own pasta sauces, for the most part with the paste and the uh, tomato sauce itself, it leaves a very acid, uh, acidic taste to it. So you've got to dumb that down to make an even a nice palatable tomato sauce. So the way you do that is to take out the acidity is give it more of a base. And so you add that sugar or that maple syrup or syrup of whatever kind to that sauce and it'll help to sweeten it up and reduce the, that acidic taste to it. Same kind of concept with bay leaves too. They kind of absorb some of the acidity and kind of release mm -hmm. this nice aroma for the, the sauce as well. Um, but yeah, you're right. You do got to be careful with sauces on a diet like that because they do. I mean, I'm constantly looking at the ingredients when I go shopping. Yeah. You know, like if I want to, if I, there's like a, a, a sauce I want to use or a, uh, you know, a, a spread, you know, or some type of yeah. dressing that I would like to put like, a, you know, on top of my little meat. Uh, that's what she said. <laughs> souffle for lack of a better term yeah yeah um but uh it, guess, it can be it, sometimes it can be just a real pain in the ass yeah and i guess that's like the thing right that's if you're that invested and motivated and that that gung-ho about your diet that you just you do you watch ingredients when you go shopping you pay attention to these things because you don't want to veer off of the path you know uh as and it you do and even some things that claim to be low carb may have other ingredients in it that's going to that's going to be counterproductive right like yeah. uh oils um i pretty much use either avocado oil or uh extra virgin olive oil um I stay the hell away from corn oil at, at all at all uh, costs because right. it'll be counterproductive. It'll be counterproductive. Mm -hmm. But so many things, corn oil is automatic. Corn oil is just what they use because it's cheap. Corn and peanut oil, right? Yeah, peanut oil too. And I avoid those you as much as I can. You know what is though is coconut oil. <clears throat> yeah, no, I put, I mentioned that earlier. I put just raw coconut oil right out of the jar into my smoothies. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. I put, um, I, I do a lot of cooking in coconut oil, uh, especially like pancakes mm. and stuff like that. Um, I, I feel like it not only does it cook well, but it also gives it a nice hint of a coconut flavor to it. And I, I actually kind of dig that. And it's healthy for you, so... You know, yeah, well, I don't win, taste win. the coconut oil because, um, uh, you know, there's other flavors in there to cover up that taste. <laughs> but it's mainly uh, to have those healthy fats Yep. Um, yep. included healthy in, because I said 70% <laughs> ratio on your fats. Um, there's literally times that I'm sitting there, I'll put my meal plan together for the day, and then I'm going, well, everything's working here, but I got a little, I don't have quite enough of uh, the fat intake I'm supposed to have. Right. So you start searching around for for certain things. Yeah. And coconut oil is one. Ghee is another one. Ghee. Ghee. Yeah. Right. Well, -E -E. I'd never heard it. Yep. Huh? G H E E. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And it's it's a uh, um, it's a uh, butter source. Um, oh, that's right. Yeah. I did know it had something to do with butter. <clears throat> See, it drives, it drives lethal crazy because I fell in love. The one thing from keto that I still do on a regular basis is, like, he was talking about how you can't have tacos. Tacos are one of my favorite things. 
So I take a bag of the rice cauliflower, a pound of beef. I do the beef up like you would with tacos. And I mix it together with cheese and make like a taco bowl that if I want something crunchy, I can fry up just cheese so that it's toasty and use that as the crunch for the taco. Mm -hmm. And it's delicious. He hates it. I could I so do it. without that rice cauliflower stuff. I, I, I really, it. I really hate it. I think that it's an abomination and never should. Yeah, I don't fuck with that either. No. She makes... He hates it. She make... makes mac and cheese, but without the macaroni and just rice cauliflower. It, it, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's it. an alternative, yeah. And he hates it, but our that daughter so and I nasty. annihilate it. Because so there's gross. so much I can add to it. I can put peas in it. I can put more cheese on top. I get... There's so much you can do with it. Like, it works as a meal. It works if you put heavier yeah. cheese sauce in there. It works as a dip for other stuff. Like, mm -hmm. Ooh, speaking of dips. It's delicious. Mm. Dips is a good choice. Buffalo chicken dip. Oh. Mm. Uh, we have a place around here that makes a bang in buffalo chicken dip. Uh, they make the buffalo chicken and the sauce. And mm -hmm. then they put it on top of a layer of sour cream or cream cheese cream cheese cream cheese they put it on top of a layer of cream cheese and then they sprinkle like mozzarella cheese on top and you put it in the oven for a little while and it comes out and it is absolutely delicious we eat it with pita chips and we just use it as a dip and it is just delicious totally banging um actually that's something you could have right like, what like a buffalo chicken dip with the sour cream and the cheese cream and cheese. the cream cheese, sorry, uh, cream cheese and the cheese and the um, buffalo chicken, right? You could have that with your keto diet. Yeah, I could. Yeah, I just uh, that, that's where things start to get complicated oh. because you're saying, okay, okay, well, I want to add this. Okay, wait, that put me just on top of the of the amount of uh, carbs I'm supposed to have that day. Okay. Or sometimes a little under, sometimes a little more. Um, so I, that's another reason why I, I just don't, I just keep it basic Yeah. because yeah. otherwise I'm going to drive myself nuts. Yep. Okay. I got you. That's, that's one of those cheat day foods. Yeah. Where if you're going to yeah. border an edge, that's what you'd, you'd go for. Yeah. Now is that, is that something that you would go for on a cheat day? Well, I don't really have cheat days, but, uh. Um, like I said, keto. You have a you have a keto style cheat day. You know, yeah. That just involves spending more money on certain things you're not going to have normally, like like uh, keto style uh, protein waffles. Oh yeah. Okay. You know, or uh, there's a uh, there's an ice cream that uh, has about five net carbs in it, and then one of those pints. High protein, low carb pancakes. High fat. Yeah. Freaking Kodiak cakes, man. You can bulk the hell out of it with protein. You can make it three different ways. You can make it just with water. You can make it mm -hmm. with an egg. Or you can make it with milk and an egg. And when you make it with the milk and egg, it adds the most amount of protein to these things. And it's, oh, they're great. They're thick. They're a little heavy. But they're great. That's Absolutely. what she said. But um, yeah. So we we've we've been going on about food for a little while now. Uh, we did let's have stop a, because it's making me hungry. Me too. I mean, <laughs> we're gonna have to eat after this. Um, I have chicken dip sitting downstairs that I'm gonna polish off. Yeah, you do. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna have to figure out something to eat. Maybe I'll make up some of that kielbasa when when we finish up. I don't know. Maybe there's also still a serving of shepherd's pie down there too. Ooh, if you would like that to have good. that, I will offer um, that. <laughs> yeah, maybe. We'll see. Uh, we'll figure that out afterwards. But for right now, let's uh, let's talk about something a little different, guys, on a different note here. Uh, we're going to dig into this next topic, which is monthly subscription boxes and the things that you can currently get for monthly subscription boxes and things that we might like to see in the future uh, to become monthly subscription boxes. I know for first of all, for the first one that I'm going to throw out there, 
I can tell you this is a super popular one and many, 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 many people have this, are subscribed to this service. Uh, but monthly subscription Funko Pop dolls. <laughs> Serious. People are nuts about those Pop dolls and they, they love this. Uh, there are a couple that I definitely like, I think look cool, but having like this insane collection of Pop. Yeah. It's just, it's a little strange to me, but then again, you know. Yeah, I know. Vapors. Like, I know a few people that have got Funko Pop dolls lining their walls, and I'm like, what is wrong with you? I've got two. One was given to me as a gift, and the other one I picked up a long time ago. Um, I don't even know where they are right now. One of them's right yeah, there. Yeah, one think of them's that's right the one there. That's Mr. Robot. You. It is. That's the Mr. Robot one. She got me Elliot from Mr. Robot in a Pop doll. With her own money. With her own money. She got it for <laughs> me as a present, yeah. And uh, then I've got Goku from Dragon Ball Z. And um, that I'm good with that. I don't need any more. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm all set with the two. I don't need to start a collection of those. I've already got a, a collection of vinyl records that I started a couple of months ago that I never should have started because I didn't realize how expensive it would be for records that you actually want. Um but the Popco thing, uh, the Funko Pop Dolls thing, I'm good with just the two that I have. I don't need to start a collection. But as far as the monthly subscription box, uh, you know, it's not something I would do. But, I mean, I know that a lot of other people are super into the Funko Pop Dolls. So I, I'm, oh, yeah. I'm pretty happy with the fact that they offer a, a service like that. I mean, it caters to the, to the fan base, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. You know? Well, it works. There's if you have a hobby, there's almost guaranteed to be a monthly subscription box for it. Mm. I mean, you've got for dog people. There's Bark Box. There's Cat Boxes. There's Chewy. Yeah. No, Chewy.com no, Chewy. is an ordering service. Yeah. That's a, yeah, it's an ordering service. You know, there was a point where I bought Lethal a three month fishing subscription box, Damn. and he got you know baits and stuff like that in the Mystery mail, tackle new box lures and stuff like that. Mystery Tackle Box. There's Dungeons and Dragons ones where mm -hmm. it's called Dungeon in a Box and it comes up and it gives you these small, instead of having to make stuff for your players, you get like a series of two or three small dungeons to run them through and everything you need to run them. I mean, okay. they're, they're everywhere. They're well, for what everything. Are your, what are your thoughts on Funko Pops specifically though? Funko Pops? Eh. Eh. Do without them. I just eh. Okay. I'm not. If I collect something, I want something that's going to have. Actually, value. I don't think you have a single one. I don't have a single one. I have no Funko Pops. And she's like, I give a damn less. I only have one, and that's a that's Slash. Slash. Yeah, I have that on one of my shelves, in my in my front in uh, in front of my desk. That's awesome. I, I, I would love a Slash doll, Guns and Roses, just not Axl Rose because he's fat now. Well, if I if I had to get, just get a Benny Hill, doll. just get a Benny Hill uh, doll, and that's just, they look alike these days. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. If I had to get a Funko Pop, it would have to be Nightmare Before Christmas because realistically, yeah. there's nothing else that I like as much as I like well, that, and I don't like the chibi, bubbly look of them. Actually, now that you mention that, there is a couple of Funko Pop dolls I would love to have that I didn't actually realize they made until, like maybe a couple of years after I'd already seen the show. Uh -huh. But Light Yagami and Ryuk from Death Note, they actually turned those into pop dolls. And I those are the only two that I would actually want. Um, and that's it. Again, don't need a, a subscription to a monthly box service because I'm not that into them. But, um, you know, they are out there for everybody. Matt, yeah. what's one you've heard of? Um, well, I mean, I have a couple. I mean, I uh, I use the Amazon subscribe and save, okay. which is you know basically you know a you put together your own box hmm. of of what you need on a month to month basis or every two months or whatever, and uh, you know make sure you just got room in your account or on your credit card when it you know well, I know what they say they're going to charge you or uh, when they say. Uh, it's only uh, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, 
I have no idea. I can't think of it. <laughs> I think I think I, you're rubbing off on me, uh, uh, Lethal. I'm, I'm like, forgetting <laughs> yeah, that's what said. I'm saying. Oh. oh, I think she. I think you're rubbing off on me. Um, yeah. Um, you guys deserve. I'll be that. honest. I am. I'm. Today is a struggle. I am. I am very tired. <laughs> um, but. Uh, uh, what was the question? Uh, about what Funko was the Pops question? Or... Yeah, you are turning into me. <laughs> um, what, what, what was the... Uh... <laughs> we were talking about monthly box subscriptions and... Ah, yes, I was talking about the subscribe and save. Yes, Amazon. And, uh, you know, make sure you have, uh, you know, room on your credit card or whatever it is, that, that, you know, because it's automatic. Yep. You know, and uh, I also have a Dollar Shave Club. Okay. Which uh, I usually I don't get that monthly because I don't need it monthly, um, but every three or four months I get a four pack of razor blades delivered to me, and a bottle of their uh, shaving cream. Oh, there you go. Because you know I have a beard, so I don't I just shave on the sides of my cheek and under my neck. Right. So it's not like I'm having to do full shaves of my face on a di- on a day to day basis, and the fact that you know during we're in the pandemic and quarantine and. You know, right now I'm I'm uh, out on disability. I don't have to shave every day or every other day. I shave usually every two days. Hmm. You know, clean up under my neck and and my cheeks. Yeah. Um, I actually kind of. But have to do that. Uh, yeah, that's uh, I got that. Um, I have some. Uh, oh, what do you call it? Uh, some. I've had some uh, monthly subscriptions in the past. Um, even in vaping, you know, we had sample box for a long time. Yep, we did. We had sample box. We had uh, vape box too. I don't know if you remember that one. It was very, very yeah, similar to sample box. Very similar. Like it was identical, but different company name. Um, yeah. Me, like Roxanne, uh, like Pixie said, yeah, it's hard for me not to use your real name. Uh, <laughs> like Pixie said earlier, she did give me a, um, a three month subscription to what they call mystery tackle box. And it's not like the Amazon thing that you were just talking about. It was, um, you don't get to choose what goes in your box. They just throw a a random selection of bait into a box. Uh, they send Mm -hmm. you hooks, stickers. They send you all different types of lures, plastic, uh, rubber worms, stuff like that. Um, they just pack a bunch of stuff into a box and they ship it out to you. They do specify, though, like if you yeah. only do freshwater fishing, you only have to click off the freshwater box. No, it goes even more in-depth than that. What? You can choose the species of fish that you're fishing for, and they send you the box specifically designed for that type of fishing. So it, I don't know. I clicked freshwater and got you three months. That's that's what oh. I know, and everything made you happy. Yep. So. Yep. There are, there are a couple, like... Uh, Oh, uh, like comic book uh, themed yeah. subscription yeah. boxes. I would like, or to the where you'll get every every club. every month or every two months, you'll get like in the mail. You'll get uh, trading cards, uh, a T-shirt, yeah, um, some some something that's in the style of like a like a a, a gla a cup, a mug, uh, a little action figure, a Funko Pop. Yeah, you know, you'll you'll get all these. You know, though that would be a cool subscription service to have, but. Uh, um, and then, you know, there's, uh, uh, you know, uh, monthly, uh, subscription services when it comes to entertainment, you know, Netflix, mm-hmm. uh, Amazon prime. That's, right. But uh, you, <clears throat> I was thinking more along the lines of subscription services that like ship you out like a mystery box or something okay. to put together. Um, like, I know that there's coffee companies that do, like, a coffee of the month club kind of thing. Yeah. My mom's Alcohol. You know, we know Poon Sauce yeah. has, uh, we know uh, <laughs> our friend Poon Sauce, McNasty, he's got, like, a monthly beer, beer subscription yep. service. Yep. There are different uh, flavors of chips, uh, different types of peanuts or, or mixed nuts that have different uh, seasonings to them. You'll get all this, all this crazy stuff in the mail. Yeah. Um, I, uh... I tried a couple different keto uh, ones. They had a uh, a keto box one where you get all these little sna- keto snacks 
in the mail. They have they have them for uh, uh, if you want snacks from other countries. You know, mm. stuff you can't you don't necessarily, you can't go buy it at uh, uh, the grocery store or a Seven Eleven here in the states. But That's so they'll cool. put all this stuff together for you, and they'll send you a monthly box of all these crazy uh, stuff that they eat in Japan or Germany or yep. you know France cool. or whatever. <laughs> That's really cool. I just hope they don't send any like cockroaches or weird bugs or something. They do. They no, you, no you, that's better. a different subscription service. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> nope, that's one of the things that Ari and I like to do. There's a couple of, I, I don't know, I want to call them entertainers that are groups of people that do skits and stuff like that. Kind of like Mad TV, only not as mad. And one of the things they do is they actually have their cast do that every month. They get the subscription boxes where they get snacks from Japan or Italy or Germany. And they do like a reaction video of trying mm -hmm. all of these different foods and things like that. And some of them looked really, really good. Mm. Yeah, a friend of mine's into like all the different kind of Kit Kats you can get. And yeah. uh, he gets all these weird, weird Kit Kats, especially from Japan. Yeah, there's some you weird know, uh, there. there's some weird. Yeah, it's it's weird. <laughs> I'm like, well, who the hell wants? To, why would you want to eat a? Uh, okay, I get a mint Kit Kat, but uh, why would you want to eat a, a pizza flavored Kit Kat? No, no thanks. They have no panty thanks. vending machines over there. I don't question anything. <laughs> this is. Um, I, I it's used don't... panties too, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it's a used panties vending machine. That is very. Awkward. Weird. Very weird. Uh, that is one of those things we can call weird and not just different. Um, no, there, there are things that are different and there are things that are like, you know, you're, you're weird, man. You're fucking yeah, weird. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, well, I, I know for me, uh, one that I'm personally looking at is a monthly subscription box to a company called Vinyl. V-N-Y-L. And it is exactly as it sounds. It is a monthly subscription service to random vinyl records that of like uh, uh, of your choosing, per, not per se, really. Mm -hmm. um, they give you a selection that you can choose from. And one of the selections on that list is always going to be, um, it starts with a C, can't remember, but it um, basically they, they take... On your profile, when you set up your profile on this website, you put in a list of all of your favorite artists and the genres that you listen to. Um, and, you know, they even have a box for your unicorn album, something you've been searching for for a while and you just can't find. And you put the title in there. And, and if they can find it, maybe they might send it to you. Uh, who knows? But um, you get to choose from that list or uh, the the little other one that with the start, it's with the C. And if you choose that one, then what it'll do is it'll pick a record that pertains to your favorite artists list, is within those genres, could be those artists, could be other artists within the same genre. Um, and that's one I've been really looking at. And it's not expensive for a, a single record a month. It's like 15 bucks a month. Uh -huh. um, and then I think it's like 30 or, or 30 I think it's thirty twenty nine ninety nine. I believe for uh, three records a month, um, which is not bad. Usually it's forty, but I, I believe there's a, a discount right now. Um, yeah, you know what that reminds me of. You remember uh, the Columbia House? Uh, you go through the TV guide, yes, and you find the Columbia House. You get twelve DV or twelve CDs, yeah, twelve uh, uh, tape cassettes, and you tape a penny to the thing. And then you'd send it out, and then after that, you're supposed to pay a monthly fee to have regular, you know, well, I used to just do that in, you know, back in the 80s when they weren't verifying anything. You right. would literally just tape the, the penny to the thing and just throw it in the mail and mm. mark off a list of all the things you wanted. I would get something, I would get like a big box of CDs or DVDs in the mail, and then I never paid for, never didn't finish paying for anything. Um and then I would do that like three or four times. Mm. Uh, it was kind of like changing your email address. You know, you ever do that with a with a like a Netflix or something? They tell you, okay, <laughs> we're going to give you 
a month free. Yeah, and you make at a this new email, email address, address and you make a new email mail address, and that's all they base it off of. Yep. And so then you get a new subscription, you get another month free. Yes, I've done. And that. then what I would usually do after I'd exhaust four or five emails, by that point I would get a, I'd be getting other emails saying, "Hey, we want you back. We'll give you another two months free if you sign back up." At, you know, with this email address. <laughs> so I would just jump back and forth. And I, I did that for like for almost two years. I did that for literally almost two years Free before Netflix I finally was like, life. okay, I've exhausted it. Unless I start creating new email addresses, which I didn't want to do, I might as well just start paying, you know, it was about 35 bucks a month to, to have these services. That might be why they stopped doing that for a while. Oh, yeah. Just that they have to, they had to get away from the free months. Yeah. Um, because. They were losing you know, a lot of money from people. They're doing losing that. people doing, you know, doing this con, you know. Yeah. And that's what it is. It's a con. But guess what? Uh, I'd rather I was I needed that money for something else. Plus, but I wanted that service too. Yeah. You know. Um, it makes me sad that there's an entire field of used email addresses that will never be touched again, <laughs> and are just sitting there crying for their owners. <laughs> sitting up, sitting there, taking up space in somebody's server somewhere. Doing absolutely nothing with no activity to it. AOL put a stop to that. What? To um, useless email addresses. With AOL, if you don't log in once every three months to your email address, you they lose shut it. They down? It. Good. Well, well it's not so hard to log, log in. Then. No. I log in at least once a day to my email. At least. I'm always checking my emails. Um, yeah, I got five, yeah. five different emails. And they're all used for something. Yeah. You know, even one is just like a pure, you know, sign up for this uh, this subscription service or sign, send us your email address and we'll give you a coupon code. Yeah. And uh, so I'll use a different email address and I'll get multiple coupon codes and then, you know, play that game. Yep. Yep. Now, an older one, I'm dating myself here because this goes back many years i don't know well i'm sure they still do it um but the book club where they would send you a random book every month mm -hmm. yeah i remember you know that was when i was younger they did that when i was in in middle school they would they were doing that um but uh yeah the book club they've even got like you said the cd club the um that one there they've got i just need a service that'll deliver me uh you know, anything i need for shed time any kind of keto snacks i want yeah and uh you know maybe a uh some treats for my cat or you know, <laughs> you right. know just you know um and believe it or not there are <clears throat> certain uh, subscription services where they have this amount these type of products and you're allowed to take choose five products from this list of two or three hundred products, and then you uh, and you just change it every. You just go in there and change your preferences every month. Yeah, you yeah. know that way you're not uh, buying the same the same uh, flavors or what have you, um, same products that you previously purchased. Maybe they're just they look a little differently, but it's basically the same product. Right. That's right. how I got my favorite pair of leggings. Um, I have two pair. They're from Pop Fit, and they were doing a special where you get a pair when you just pay shipping. And if you signed up for their monthly subscription service for a month, you got a second free pair. And these are like 50 to $70 leggings. These are not something I would normally purchase for myself. Um, but you could cancel at any time. So I was able to order two pair for $14 and then cancel the subscription when they got here. Mm. And they're like my mm -hmm. favorite thing ever. Like if I had the $30 a month, I would absolutely do that. And they do the same thing. You pick from the list of the styles and colors you like, and they pick one of those in your size and send it your way once a month. Wasn't that Gwyneth Paltrow that made a, <laughs> a leggings line? Wasn't that Gwyneth Paltrow? Who was that? I can't remember, but they had commercials for it all, all over the place, even on YouTube. Probably one of the Kardashians. Oh. No, no, no. It, it wasn't <laughs> wasn't the Kardashians. Um, but... Uh, I think she does a monthly mystery subscription thing too. I mean, they're going to be mm -hmm. leggings, but I think that the style might change. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Um, so we're 
coming up to 20 minutes to the hour. Uh, Matt, what is one, one type of monthly subscription box that you would like to see? And I know you mentioned uh, kind of like a CBD THC kind of subscription box. Is, is that kind of up the, uh, the line of where no, we're going? No, I mean, that's just, that would be nice. Um, if I were to have anything that I would want, it would be like that I could get a combination of things in a monthly subscription that, that caters to stuff that I like. Mm. You know, uh, you know, kind of mentioned earlier with the uh, the Marvel or the DC uh, style boxes, right? Um, where you get like a sticker, a T-shirt, a hat. A... Yep. Um, but what I would really like is a kind of a combination of uh, what do you call it? Uh, you know, keto snacks with uh, you know a uh, CBD or THC, uh, you know, which uh, and you know, I want to throw some vape stuff in there. I want to throw some comic book stuff in there. I could create a pretty big monthly box if I wanted to. Yeah, just like um, a, a random product kind of subscription box, but pertaining to like certain areas of interest, maybe. Yeah. Like when you sign up, you you say these are the areas of interest that I have. Um, these are the kind of things that I like to do in my off time or as hobbies. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they just kind of send you something out specifically designed for that. That would be really cool. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. I like that. Yeah, kind of like a hobby box. Yeah, yeah, kind of like that. Um, well, for... Actually, you know what? I'm not. I'm going to go last. What about you, Pixie? What is one mystery, mystery subscription box or monthly subscription box, rather, that you would like to see uh, made in the future, or even if it's not going to be made in the future, what's one that you would like to see? The one that I would like is already out, but the quality of the products and the boxes have really not proved worth it. Mm. And that's, as a horse person, they have, like, pony boxes. Okay. And you tick off, so you know, you a pony? well, whatever sizes you have. So if you have an actual pony, you pick small gear. Medium, yeah, extra yeah, large. Yeah, large, extra okay. large. You know, you, you pick your sizes. And depending on the size of the box is what you get. Mm -hmm. And they get expensive because a lot of that is leather. It's metal. Yeah. It's cut. It's very particular well, and specific. Horse products in general aren't very cheap <clears throat> at all. I mean, I've gone to a couple of tack shops with you, and everything's been really, really high priced. Yeah. Well, and that's the problem is making that either making it affordable for people to get quality products in it, because a lot of the people pick you know the twenty or thirty dollar box, and you pretty much get like. A lick it treat, which is this plastic thing that you put uh, almost salt a lick. salt disc in, and you hang it, and they play with it, and like a couple of things of cookies and a sticker. Mm. And, and I'm mm -hmm. sorry, it, it's just not, not worth it. No, it's not worth it. So if you so, could make one yourself, if you could come up with your own mystery box per month, what would what would that be? What would that contain? It would. It would have to be outsourced to bulk warehouses where you could get it cheaper, but it would be on the similar lines of making like a pony box. But making it worth it. And yeah, making it worth it where you get clip-on reins, you get breastplate pieces, you get leather cleaners, you get you know stuff you know that you might not normally buy. You might stick with your tried and true leather stuff until... You get this awesome German stuff right. in your your yeah. monthly box, and now all of a sudden your entire cleaning game has changed. Right, and you mentioned earlier in the one that pre-exists, the one that you were just talking about that actually exists now, you were saying that they, they toss in cookies as part of what you get for that. I think, honestly, I think that's a bad business practice. I think they should toss you in a couple of cookies just for the simple fact that you are... A customer of that plan you know what I mean <clears throat> yeah well, I think that that should be something that they should just throw that in there well, as a hey you know what we appreciate you and you purchased this monthly box here well and it's like difficult the, because like you said everything is super expensive 
like a bag of carrot cookies can run you. I'm not saying a bag. Anywhere, but but that's what they do. They put in a small oh. bag, which at well, the tax store would be seven to fourteen dollars. Yeah, well, that's a little different because I was thinking the way you said it. I was thinking they just took a couple of cookies and threw them in there. <laughs> but if your horse doesn't like those cookies, and you got a bag of the carrot ones, a bag of the apple ones, and two refills for the lick it thing you got last month, yes, I mean you're getting fifty dollars worth of stuff if you went. And but it's completely it unusable. Exactly, you're you're handing it off to your friends instead of being able to use it for yourself. Right, right. I got you. Now, like I was saying about the cookies, though, it's kind of like stickers. A lot of companies, uh, for example, like we talked about earlier, Mystery Tackle Box, for example, they throw a bunch of stickers in their in their boxes with all of their stuff. They don't charge you for that. That's just, you know, those are just the freebies. Yeah. Like, hey, you know yeah, what? Yeah, little, little, little knickknacks here and there for, yeah. Uh, yeah, you uh, know. for promotion. Now, for myself, I would have to say, like... You, Pixie, I'm having the same kind of dilemma. The one that I really want already exists, and that's the mystery tackle box. That's the, the one, if I could have... Oh, actually, that would be a toss-up. If I could have one subscription, which would it be? Uh, vinyl or mystery tackle box? I think that would change during the seasons, though. I think during the spring, summer, and fall, I'd probably go with the mystery tackle box. Um, but yeah, they, they throw those little freebies in, too. Um, and, but the mystery tackle box already exists... So, and so does vinyl. That already exists. I would. Um, could I get a monthly subscription to uh, go to any theme park I want? I would be down for that. A subscription to Blowing Mud Monthly. I would not. I don't need a subscription. I don't need a subscription for that. Oh. <laughs> I I blow mud daily. <laughs> Screw monthly. I blow mud daily. I, I blew mud four times yesterday. <laughs> oh shit. Um, um, although so, when you say although blowing mud monthly sounds more like a magazine you would read while you're blowing mud. Right. But, right. Um, oh, that's a great <laughs> idea. Actually, back, back when everyone had Reader's Digest next to their toilets. We should rename <laughs> rename the podcast to Blowing Mud Weekly. Absolutely. Yeah. Not. <laughs> yeah. No, my dad Mud had Weekly. Sports Illustrated in the bathroom. Right. And we'll just have a, a poop emoji for the the screen. But um. I think it would be better to have a uh, a poop emoji, but it's like he's putting the Mando Mandalorian helmet on as. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh. So, for me, what one would I like to see? That's a hard question. Because, um, like I said, they already have the ones that I'd really be interested in. Um, however, like you brought up, Matt, like a, a THC CBD monthly subscription. Not like sending out flour and stuff, but maybe devices. Maybe products pertaining to THC consumption. Um as in and, edibles? And edibles, yeah. Um, I mean, obviously it would have to be, like if they were going to send you edibles, it would have to, you would have to live in a legal state. Um, but I could, mm -hmm. I could get down with that. I could absolutely get down with that. Um, well, and it allows you to get variety. That, that's the one thing I like about the idea of monthly subscription boxes is I might not put the money in to buy the salted caramel chocolate bar. But if they send me a little four square thing of it in my monthly box, okay, I'm at least going to try it. And that's how you find out if you like things is by trying them. But I don't want to put $40 into an entire chocolate bar and then find out I don't like it. Mystery kink box. <laughs> oh, that is down my alley. Absolutely. A mystery kink box. <laughs> you, mean, you mean just like a straight up sex box? Or yep, it comes with different, right. uh, different yep. kinds? Different kinds of lube, dogs, batteries, and yeah, yeah. And... <laughs> Benoit you know, balls. The whole nine. <laughs> the whole nine. <laughs> oh, man. And That'd be funny as hell. It's difficult to pick one. Well, I guarantee you those around. already exist, dude. They I do. Those already exist. Hold on. And that's just it. It's, it's difficult to find ones that haven't been made because they have boxes for everything. They have knife boxes and cooking boxes and keto boxes. They've got, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sex they toy have of, sex the month toy club. of the month club boxes. Bedroom testing kits. Spicy subscriptions. Holy shit. They have 
pretty much a box for anything and everything already. Because when they the do. monthly subscription became a thing, people jumped on that. Rightfully so. What? That's sick. I'm not going to use that service. But the fact that it exists is pretty damn funny. That's pretty cool. Uh, I know yeah. that some people are into that shit, and that, that caters to them. And that's cool. That's cool. To each their own, is what I say. Um, well, I got If I type in monthly subscription boxes, there's Electric Kit, Survival Box, Post Fly, Wolf in Time, Beef Jerky, Dungeon in a Box, Tea of the Month, Art. There's Lunar Self Kits, Monthly Bacon, Perfect Pat Cat. Like, there you know are what I would do? boxes for everything. I would make, or maybe not me make, but I would subscribe to a mystery YouTuber kit a month club. Like where they send you maybe one thing a month. One thing that would assist in your YouTube creation and production and quality. Uh, if they just sent you out one product a month uh, to maybe enhance your your studio, your your uh, yeah, your your production, you know, I'd be I'd be pretty down with that. I'd be down with that. Like they send you like a uh, you know maybe a a boom arm for your your microphone or maybe a a new camera or something. I mean I know it would get kind of expensive at that point, but um, I'd still. Like I would to like see there them. to be a uh, a subscription service where I can get uh, quality uh, uh, Marvel or DC statues. Yeah. 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 Well, there is a a free weekly <clears throat> uh, subscription. Um, club thing that you can uh, you can get uh, well Matt you, you don't want it because you already know about this but to you guys out there in YouTube land and on Spotify if that's where you're watching us or listening to us at uh, there is a weekly subscription that you guys can subscribe to and uh, you guys will be pleased with every week's thing I know because I've been a part of this and uh, that subscription service is right on Spotify. You guys can join and subscribe to this channel for this podcast right here, right now, every week. We love you. <laughs> 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 that is the best free subscription service ever. <laughs> uh, it's just us. Yeah, they're just gonna. It's just gonna get crazy as time goes on. Eventually, you can be like. Uh... Have your own hologram subscription service. You know? Yeah, right. <laughs> like, uh, oh, you saw Jay and Silent Bob reboot, right? Of course. Oh, my God. That was hilarious. The way the girls fanned out over freaking Chris Hemsworth, the the hologram yeah. there. <laughs> that was yeah. funny. Oh, have you seen that yet? Yeah, I watched it with you. Did you? Okay. Twice. Well, I know the last time I watched it was with my other buddy, Tim. Um but uh yeah so that's that's the mystery box that i would put together uh if i could have my own and subscribe to it like not just for myself but if i could put together a, a mystery tackle box club that would be it and uh, i would definitely subscribe to my own club so but aside oh, from yeah. that i'd have to go with the the other two that already exist the the vinyl and uh <coughs> mystery tackle box i i'd I would subscribe to those both before anything else. I would get you this one. It's called the Thinker Box. Lethal is so big into puzzles. Ooh. Like yes. mechanical puzzles, word puzzles, you name it. Mm -hmm. And Thinker Box is literally, they send you a box of mechanical puzzles every month mm. for you to solve. Oh my God, there's one. Oh. <clears throat> Oh my god, there's one that I watched these guys... Oh, sorry, I'm talking into my hands. Uh, there's one that I, <laughs> I watched on YouTube. This guy, uh, he's got a channel and he does these mystery puzzle boxes. And these puzzle boxes are not cheap. I'm talking like $10,000 custom handmade puzzle boxes Fuck that are that. absolutely ridiculous. And they are so neat. Like there's little buttons that you press and little drawers will pop out. Or it's just a big secret box and you have to solve the puzzle. You have to mm -hmm. figure out how to open it. And yeah, it's really, I've heard really those. cool. 
but it's way too, way too expensive for me to even consider. The fact that somebody would pay $10,000 for a puzzle box, uh, whether it was a monthly subscription or otherwise, it just astounds me. That's just astounding. But uh, guys, we've, we're coming up to like four minutes left in the, in the show. So um, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. We'll start wrapping this up. Um, Matt, what you got coming up this week, brah? Oh, just same old, same old. Uh, you know, I'll be uh, in my fifth week of uh, training. Um, things just keep getting more intense week by week. I, uh, what's it, uh, you know, we'll continue to post videos on TikTok and Instagram. Um, and that uh, is pretty much what I got going. Um, you know, of course, you can find me on Instagram at Matt Sinister, TikTok at Matt Sinister, Twitter at Matt Sinister. Um, my Matt Sinister's YouTube channel, where you can see some of my old wrestling matches from the 90s and uh, or late 90s, early 2000s. Um, my uh, first Juice Fast journey, I did a video diary for week to week of the 30-day Juice Fast that I did, which was inspired by the documentary Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead, a uh, film that changed my life as mm. far as learning about health and nutrition, um, which I am still drinking juice uh, during uh, this... Uh, keto diet i just removed the fruit okay i'm just drinking straight uh cucumber and celery and kale uh juice which yeah (laughs) i'm sorry dude i'm so sorry no you don't be it tastes like shit it tastes like complete shit sorry you have to i have to down that and then and then quickly get some water down my gullet right afterwards because chaser you know yeah you need a chaser for that shit awful yeah um I'm going to be uh, going to Vegas in a couple weeks. Oh, I'm jelly. Yeah, um, uh, to uh, have my, my father's celebration of life. Mm. Uh, farewell. We'll be scattering his ashes via helicopter um, uh, in oh, Las Vegas. people underneath. Uh, I, don't, well, I think we're doing it over the lake. We're not doing it over the... <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> over the street. We're not doing it over the sea. <laughs> Although I would be fine. I wouldn't care. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That would be fantastic. Is it snowing? <laughs> I know. Uh, I know we are. Plan- my sister is planning on taking some of his ashes and putting them in the ashtrays at a Kino, uh, Kino slot because my oh, dad right. in Samstown. You know, uh, yeah. so I got that coming up in two weeks. Uh, you know, and I just uh, got some things to get done uh, uh, before that, which, uh, you know, get the car serviced and uh, going to be staying at the stratosphere. So, uh, just uh, get ready for that, and uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, you know, we were talking about deaths, you know, family deaths a little earlier. Yeah. Um, last week, uh, I got word that my cousin, who was like my best friend growing up, uh, we were raised like brothers, um, kind of drifted apart, you know, in our our older adult years, um, but we still pass messages to each other here and there on Facebook. Uh, he just passed away. Oh. Um, so just sad. last week. Of uh, he was having a uh, a uh, what do you call bowel obstruction surgery, and they removed part of his colon. And then the surgery was successful. They went into uh, you know during his recovery, nurse went in to check on him, check his vitals, and he was non-responsive. Oof. They put him on uh, a ventilator, and uh, overnight they thought he was starting to show some signs of improvements, and then flatlined. Uh, he just died suddenly. I'm sorry. And so that's been a, a big blow. You know, we still haven't properly said goodbye to my father. Yeah. And uh, now this happens. And uh, the one I'm the one I've been most concerned about, I, I have yet to talk to her because she's just kind of, you know, just dealing with things right now and not wanting a lot of people around her has been my aunt, his mother, who is still dealing with the loss of her big brother, my father. Right. So, uh, yeah, it's been a uh, it's been a uh, real tiresome week. So it sounds like um, we've actually had forward. a similar week. What's that? I said it actually sounds like we had kind of a similar week. Yeah. You know, um, and, uh, you know, just, uh, like I said, continuing the training, continuing the uh, the dieting, and looking forward to uh, more progress. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. How about you, Pixie? What uh, what you got going on this week? Any special <clears throat> projects? And uh, where can people find you? Uh, I go in for oral surgery on Friday to have a couple of teeth removed. 
Um, I was an idiot when I was a kid, and I had braces on, and I went face first into asphalt, which did some serious damage, and the root canal I got when I was younger finally let go. So we're starting the journey on trying to get my mouth fixed up and a little more presentable so that I can stop lisping, because that has been a big irritant. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so I know next weekend I'm going to be way off. <laughs> way off. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think and so. And you guys can find me on Facebook at facebook.com backslash chaos pixie creations. Um, it's the easiest way to get a hold of me. If you don't have that, I'm also on the Lethal Discord channel. Uh, just look for Chaos Pixie. Can't miss me. You can also search for Chaos Pixie on Instagram. You will I... find her personal Instagram, though, however just to let everybody make them aware uh just to throw that out there too sorry you you keep forgetting that one and i know it's because your personal one i know yeah exactly i know i know i don't care it's still a I, link I i'm gonna promote it <laughs> um so as far as me what do i have coming up this week uh guys we're gonna try and do a couple more of those morning streams like i i did this uh this past week i did one um I just haven't been in the mindset to do them lately. That's why we've stopped. Uh, so we're going to pick that back up, I think, again this week, or at least do a few more. And um, that's that. Uh, I'm also going to be in touch with my younger brother, and hopefully we'll be able to set something up where we can hook up and we can get to know each other a bit better, uh, whether that's through Zoom or Discord, or if that's in person, I'm not sure yet. Hopefully... Uh, we, however we do it, hopefully we can do it, and that'll be an, an awesome thing. Um, what else do I have coming up? Much like Pixie, I have a uh, kind of a surgical procedure that I'm going through as well on, actually Thursday, the day before she goes in. Um, I will be going in for a surgical procedure at uh, 4.30 for my lower spine, and um, I'm also going to be a hurting puppy this weekend, so uh, we may have to delay the recording of this podcast but um we'll see how yeah, we, we feel may have, yeah we'll figure it out yeah we'll see how we feel that is gonna be so funny you with a gimpy back and me with a gimpy mouth on anesthesia <laughs> yeah right that would make a hell of a show <laughs> oh man um <laughs> that's uh gonna be coil building guys we've got the coil sale going on right now uh you guys can check out the post on instagram or facebook that's both places um, if you haven't seen it, guys, usually my aliens are more expensive uh, at like $12 to $13 a pair. Um, but right now we're doing a sale, $10 on aliens. We're doing uh, $5 on fused Claptons, $4 on Claptons. Uh, if you guys are interested in coils, hit me up. We'll talk. We'll get th something sorted for you, and uh, we'll get you guys set up. So I encourage you guys, if you're looking for coils, hit me up. Please do. Please do. Please do. Anyways, uh you guys can find me on Instagram at lethalcoils underscore SCFC. You can find me on YouTube at lethalcoils. Uh, and just to be clear, just to be 100% clear, Lethal Coils on YouTube, if you see a black circle with a red hand and my logo on the banner and there's only five videos, that is not my channel. That is some <laughs> Russian kid that stole my banner and my name and decided to make a YouTube gaming channel. Uh, and he's got a hell of a power bomb coming in his shoes. <laughs> right? <laughs> the kid's like 12. That's I know. The thing. It is the you funniest know what, thing. You know what that means? You know what that means? One day he'll be 18. <laughs> <laughs> Someday. <laughs> but no. Uh, guys, you can search for Lethal Coils on YouTube. You guys will find me. Uh, I'm the one with the kind of plaid shirt and the scally cap holding up the coffee mug and uh that would be me so guys you can find me on facebook as well uh at lethal coils or you guys can find the group page lethal coils or lethal vape crew sorry 
Uh, and if you guys aren't part of the Discord server, I will be posting that in the description links. And uh, I encourage you all to join us. Become part of the fa the facility. Become part of the family <laughs> and the community over there on Discord. Um, I don't know why I said facility. Become a, become a part of the facility. Yes, uh, you're now a wall. Well, eventually, eventually, it's just we're going to have our own compound. We're going to have our own facility. We're going to have uh, Vape City. You say where compound. It's just going to be. It's just going to be uh, as as many of us uh, living inside this huge compound uh, where we can vape freely and uh, not have to worry about other uh, uh, BS that's going on uh, currently. You know, you say the word compound and it makes me tink, tink. What the hell is up with my mouth tink. tonight? It makes, it makes me you tink. tink. Mm. It makes me think of two names. One, Jim Jones. <laughs> all right. First of all, that's all that needs to be said. Don't drink the fucking Kool-Aid. That, that's it. Jim Jones compound. Uh, the other one is uh, what his name is. I can't remember for the life of me that he was referred to as the Waco from uh, the Waco from Waco in Waco, Texas. I can't remember his name for the life of me. Oh, David. Uh, David Koresh. David that Koresh. Was him. Yes. David Koresh. Yes. When you say the word compound, those are the two names that come to mind. I don't know. What is it about that word? It has many different uses and purposes, but uh, that's where you guys can or find a, Or a polygamous Mormon family in Utah. Yeah. Hey, you know. But, uh, <laughs> you know. Um, so, they guys, live in a compound. We have an awesome show coming up next, um, next time. I don't know exactly what day the podcast is going to be uploaded yet because it of how we might feel on Friday, Thursday, Friday afternoon. So, mm -hmm. um, we do have an awesome show coming up very, very soon, guys. We've got a very, very special guest we are going to bring on, uh, for our first guest of the podcast. We're not going to tell you who it is just yet, but you're going to have to tune in, stay tuned in because you're not going to want to miss this one, guys. Um, and not that is all. going to be coming in a week or so. So, Big love to you all. Thanks for tuning in and listening along with us as we just sit here, shoot the shit, and, uh, you know, have a good discussion. I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. I hope you did anyways. If you did, please hit the like button uh, down below. And if you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button too if you're watching on YouTube. If you guys aren't following us on Spotify, head on to Spotify, search for Cloudy Days Calm Nights. Uh, you'll find the podcast. Go ahead and follow us there as well. That would be great. Uh, if we can hit 100 followers... We'll be doing a small giveaway um, that we will be organizing together. Um, and so, yeah, I hope that you guys go over to Spotify. There, there's my Boston. That's my Boston. Spotify. You got to go to Spotify. Spotify. Uh, go to Spotify. Oh, and, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, let me stuff my face with some Pepperidge Farms. Pepperidge Farms. Oh, my God. Go, go park your car, and then you can walk all the way down the street. <laughs> no. Go park your fucking car, go down to the packy, the hospital. get a six-pack. Yeah, the packy, right next to the hospital. Um, anyways, guys, that's going to wrap it up for us tonight. We've gone over time, but thank you guys so much again for tuning in and bearing with us. Uh, it's been a, a pleasure making this podcast. It's been a pleasure spending time with two of my favorite people, Chaos Pixie, Matt Sinister, Thank you guys so very, very much for another great week episode. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Peace. Peace, guys. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.